Hi friends, this is Tracy from The Sewing Channel. Welcome back, and if you're new here, welcome. I wanted to make rectangle quilt blocks so badly that I went ahead and made up my own designs, and here they are, aren't they sweet? This is just a small sampling of all the combinations that you can do with a rectangle quilt block. I'm calling this series Bar Stars. In today's video, I'm gonna share with you how to make three of these star bar quilt blocks. You'll have to keep an eye out and stay tuned for the rest of the star bar quilt block videos. Are you ready to think outside of the quilt box? Enough talking already. Let's make some star bar quilt blocks. For all of the bar stars today, you will need a center at three and a half by six and a half inch rectangle. I made a template of the rectangle so I didn't have to keep on measuring every single time I made the center. Two cornerstone background pieces at two inches, and you'll need also two strips for the sides at five and a quarter inches by two inches. For the Crazy Bar Star, we are going to use the Magic 8 half square triangle technique. You'll take two 5 inch squared pieces of fabric, the background and the tips for your star points, lay them right sides together, and then you're going to draw a plus sign from top to bottom and side to side. And how I did this was, to get really accurate, I made sure that my 2.5 inch mark on my ruler matched the edge of the fabric and then mark your square. Then you'll mark from one corner meeting to the other corner and then turn it and mark the other corner to meet the other corner. All this marking will be well worth it in the end. Pop a couple pins in there, take it to the sewing machine. On both diagonal lines, you will stitch a quarter inch on both sides. Don't sew on that plus sign though, that is for cutting later. This is what you should have so far, looking good. Now we're going to give it a hot press. I like to press after I've sewn the Magic 8. It just makes everything lay nice and flat. Now it's time to cut on the plus sign lines. Go ahead and just lay your ruler down and cut through one side and either turn your mat or your ruler and cut straight down the other side of the plus sign. You should be left with four squares with a diagonal line through them. And that diagonal line, yep, you guessed it, it's for cutting. <laughs> so just cut straight through using your ruler onto the pressing mat. Here I'm warming everything up. I'm going to open all of the seams in the back and finger press them and then take my spritz of water and iron over with a dry iron. And that seems to make a really big difference in how flat my seams lay in the end. That spritz and dry iron, it's, it's a good combo. And I think you already know that I love the wood clapper that I made and it makes a huge difference. It's a game-changing difference. If you wanna make this wood clapper, click the link in the top right-hand corner and you can check out that video. I'm not sure if I'm alone here, not on this one, but trimming those half square triangles, it's like a necessary evil, right? I mean, I don't know. It's probably my least liked thing about quilting, but just enjoy the process. We're going to trim these to two inches squared. This is probably my favorite part in quilting, is when I start to lay all the puzzle pieces out and I can see the vision of what I initially thought it was going to be. I'm going to construct this crazy bar star laying horizontally. I sewed my bottom row first. I took the two half square triangles and I sewed those together and then I sewed those to the strip. 
and then I grabbed my top row and so those two half square triangles together and then sew those onto the strip and the cornerstone too don't forget that and after every single seam I opened and I pressed and that's very important when you press your seams open as you go you have a solid foundation of what your next piece that you're going to connect it to will be. When I first started quilting, I never pressed all the time after every single seam. I thought that was ridiculously crazy. But I soon realized that when I do press my seams open as I go, everything lays a lot nicer and things meet up where they should be meeting up. <laughs> and I don't have to worry about any surprises at the end of my quilt block. I absolutely love this crazy bar star. This crazy bar star <laughs> is kind of crazy really because it kept me up at night thinking about this star. I kept constructing it over and over and over again in my head how I wanted a rectangle star, but I just couldn't figure it out because you know, with measurements and stuff and I'm terrible at math and whatnot, so. I just kept thinking of this crazy looking rectangle star and this was the one that was in my head. So finally, it's been put to fabric and I love it. Once all your rows are together, give everything a good hot press. And then we're going to trim this block. You see the quarter inch mark above the tip of this block right here? You want to make sure that you have a quarter inch from the tip to the edge of the fabric left on your block. So that way when you go to piece it to the next block, you will be assured that you will have your points prayerfully. <laughs> and there you have it, the crazy bar star, <laughs> the pattern that was in my head for weeks. On to the next bar star. For the banner bar star, you will need three and a half inch by six and a half inch rectangle. 
that has a saying on it or something specific that you want to showcase. You'll need two background strips at two and a half inches wide by 14 inches, two banner extension pieces at two and a half by three and a half inches, four two and a half inch squares, two background and two in the print. For this banner bar star, we are going to make regular old half square triangles. So you'll take that two and a half inch squared fabric, lay them right sides together, and you'll draw a straight line from corner to corner. And then we'll sew a quarter inch on both sides of that center diagonal line. Give both squares a nice hot press to seal everything in. Slice them right in half, making four half square triangles. Open up all of the seams, spritz them with some water, and give them all a good hot press. We want them as flat as possible. Trim the squares down to two inches. Tell me down in the comments, whose favorite thing about quilting is trimming half square triangles? I wanna know who you are. <laughs> Lay all the pieces out so we can see what it's going to look like. And it's going to be just darling. I mean, you could put any words that you wanted in here. I mean, think of the possibilities in different quilts. You could make with someone's name on it or, you know, just anything. Lately, the trend has been words on fabric. Great timing for the Banner Bar Star. Your background fabric strips for the top and the bottom need to be 14 inches long by two and a half inches in width. Mine look longer in the video because they are. Pay no mind to that though. <laughs> Give everything a nice hot press and be sure to trim up those sides and you end up with this really darling bar star banner. Now for all of you that are gonna say, well Tracy, that's not a star. I'm gonna say, if you add a couple more half square triangles, it's a star. <laughs> okay, let's keep on going. <laughs> Let's make some dancing bar stars, and boy are these cute. Now you're going to need that center to be six and a half by three and a half, just like before. Four two inch squared pieces of background fabric. And just like the crazy bar star, you're going to need two five inch pieces of fabric, one background and one print. And we're going to do the magic eight, just like we did on the other star. On the Magic 8, I always cut the plus sign first, and then I go for the four individual diagonals. I feel like it gives me more control instead of trying to cut one long diagonal. I hope that makes sense.
And just like that, a dancing bar star. I know, cute, right? Stay tuned for more. Until next time on the Sewing Channel, take care. Thank you.